so tired You don't want a low burning pilot light As your fire So when you're around me Walk to this beat Walk to this beat With your whole two feet You got a lot of running yet Some complicated steps to take been to a place so rich in history that you can almost feel the stories radiating from the walls and smiling out of the eyes of those who have lived it? This is how it feels when you walk through the doors of the St. Martha's Regional Hospital in the Bethany in Anakinish, Nova Scotia. You see, St. Martha's is not just a hospital but it's a living legacy built by the Sisters of St. Martha's. With a mission to serve the people and create a positive healing environment, not just for the body, but for the mind and the spirit as well. I had the luxury, in 1981 when I came here, there were lots of Sisters of St. Martha present in the building and working here. So we got to see their uh, influence on care and on the, on the facility and you know how that mission statement generated out of their initial work. And I think that now we're, we're facing a, a challenge where there is less physical presence in the building of the Sisters of St. Martha's and other clerical clergy. When you look at that um, history, the new staff aren't living the history of St. Martha's the way I lived it 20 years ago. So I think it's important that we pass on to new staff what our roots are, where we came from, and why we believe in the things that we believe, and how it did start with the sisters, but it has very much been lived out by our leadership and our staff today. When I started at St. Martha's, uh, the, the sisters of St. Martha were very physically present. Um, they were providing service and uh, helping to support the hospital and they were um, really mentoring staff and, and living the mission. Um, over time um, and today certainly um, there are very few sisters present physically but I think that the legacy uh, of the Sisters of St. Martha and the spirit um, is alive and becomes and comes alive in the mission statement. When I first arrived, we, there was a lot more uh, involvement on the management level with the uh, Sisters of St. Martha, and they had a different way of doing business. They were very holistic in how they approached management and also how they approached uh, their dialogue with patients and staff. And although we don't have as many sisters working in management uh, at the hospital now, um, what we've learned uh, is, is, is just transcended uh, different generations. So uh, because you work here, you just have that, that intuitive understanding uh, that this is how things need to be and this is how you need to treat people. The School of Nursing was run by the Sisters of St. Martha and of course we did much of our clinical, if, um, not quite all, but a lot of our clinical was here. So I was definitely comfortable with working here. I don't think as a young nurse I really understood truly formally what what the vision, the mission and the vision and values were, but it, it, it became ingrained in you um, through your training, through your early development as a nurse. And now when I look at the mission statement I think, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's something that uh, we do in our everyday. You see it in the in the little things. It's not it's not really a big thing that happens that you know it, it knocks you out. But it's it's the little things that happen on a daily basis here that make you think. Yes, we are practicing the, the mission of St. Martha's. We are practicing it and carrying it on. We should never underestimate the restorative power of such life-enhancing, informal conversations and the significant contribution individuals such as that diminutive cleaning lady can make to the quality of care 
simply by relating to the patient as a person rather than a pathology. So what I found at St. Martha's, and I found at the larger health centers that treated me as well, but they were larger, and they were more informal, and they were more uh, regimented, and to that degree, in spite of the best efforts of the staff, were uh, less heartening to an individual who was looking for heart as well as you know, medical healing. It's the reduction of the sense of loneliness. Uh, it's the attention to your uh, social and emotional needs, uh, where it is not just enough to take your temperature and check your vitals, because part of your vitals are the fact that you're feeling lonely. Part of the vitals are the fact that you're feeling anxious. Part of the vitals is that you need somebody to sit with you and uh, commiserate with you and listen to you. And I get the sense, and I've witnessed since I've been here, that that is part of the practice of the art of medicine, you know, not just the science of medicine, dealing with not just my physical concerns, but my well-being in a broader sense, including those concerns that one could broadly call uh, spiritual concerns. You know, I've been going to St. Martha's Hospital since I was a child. I grew up with a very severe epileptic condition, and I would be staying in the IWK, which was a great hospital as well, and I was also in the hospital in London, Ontario, but it never felt the same as staying at St. Martha's. And the people there still remember me as a child, and they still show those acts of kindness that I remember. It gives this feeling of warmth in me that makes me feel like I've almost come home to a place that could have been a traumatic place for me, but it wasn't. It was a very loving and nurturing place that helped me in my healing process. It's about having respect for anyone who comes seeking our help, seeking healing um, in body, mind, or spirit, and it's to sort of recognize um, the, the dignity of that person as a child of God, first of all, and to treat them with that respect. The care of, uh, of a spirit, of a person, I actually saw this one day, one of our sisters has dementia and she got out of Bethany and she 